lovely to see you all this morning. Looks like um, some people maybe went to the, the annual meeting instead of coming to worship, but that's okay. <laughs> I think we had as many people in the meeting as we have in here. Sometimes it's nice to have intimate, smaller services, and this will be one of those, which is lovely. So, welcome. Um, we will begin worship in just a moment, but I'm going to invite you all to join with me, one collective body, and we'll enter into a moment of silence so that we can prepare ourselves, body, mind, and spirit, for worship. Please stand and we'll sing hymn 493 from your blue hymnals. in your red books of common prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of scripture. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord, my God, any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who, presum or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. 
food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. And in your, in your blue hymnals, or no, I'm sorry, in your Lift Every Voice and Sing hymnals, we'll sing hymn number 115, and we'll sing it three times through. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord.
name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So this Sunday, we are continuing, as we have been, to move through Epiphany. Epiphany is the season that follows Christmas. Christmas simultaneously feels like not long ago and also a really long time ago. So it's nice to have this little recap. Baby Jesus was born. Everyone was happy and excited. Then, the next week, Jesus is a 30-year-old grown man, and he's being baptized in the River Jordan. And on his baptism, the clouds opened and the dove descended, and we hear the voice of God saying, This is my son. That proclamation, 30 years after, those angels came and announced that same thing. And there was all that excitement and all of that energy. And now time has gone by and we're renewing that energy again. Now for us, a week has gone by or two weeks. But remember that Jesus had to grow up. And that takes some time. So now we move from Jesus' baptism to the next two weeks. Where we saw two different versions of a call story. So we had... Um, the calling of Nathaniel is kind of the focal point uh, of the first story, where Nathaniel um, sees Jesus suddenly for who he truly is, because Jesus had this perception of seeing Nathaniel sitting under a fig tree, and that's all it took for Nathaniel. He said, Jesus, you couldn't have possibly seen me with your eyes, but you knew I was there. I know I was there. That's fantastic. And you must be the Messiah. And so, uh, so Nathaniel believes and he's following. And then last Sunday, we talked about, uh, we saw the, the call and response of um, Peter and, and Andrew, the fishermen, the four fishermen, were called last Sunday. And we talked about not so much the call, but the response. And last Sunday, the last thing that we did before leaving was sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. Because that's the response to the call. Jesus appears, God appears in our lives. We feel that holy presence. We identify this movement within and around us. And we decide to do something with it. Now, for the disciples, for anyone who is 2,000 years ago walking along with Jesus and identifying Jesus as God incarnate, they decide to follow, and now our question is, what next? What happens once we've decided to follow Jesus? Once we've decided to embrace God's call on our lives in whatever form that might take. What happens next? And so the first thing that Jesus does, and that's now this Sunday, is exercises a demon. And if you're like me, we're tracking pretty well. Okay, I can follow a call. I can follow a response. I can think about, um, I can think about what Jesus, what God might be wanting from me can start to discern those things, but I don't see demons. I don't see pointy horns and pitchforks walking around, or the scary exorcisms that we see portrayed in movies. There is more distance here. When the first thing Jesus does is gets rid of this evil spirit. So, let's think Instead of this being a demonic possession like we might see in the movies, let's imagine that an evil spirit is something that has power over you that is not of God. Anything in your life that has power over you that is not created that does not bring about ultimate goodness 
to you, to the people around you, that does not move you forward in peace and in love of this earth, of our fellow created beings. And I think if we are to think about it that way, about what identifying the things, the, the essences in our lives that have power over us, we can identify some that look like God, like how God is manifesting within our lives. And we can probably all identify at least one that probably does not look so much like God. Something that has power in our lives that doesn't come from where God is coming from and moving us. And if we can identify that then we can begin to move along with Jesus, with this morning's gospel, and exercise it. That is the first thing that Jesus does. The first thing he does in the gospel of Mark, in his ministry, is to exercise power that doesn't come from God. It's not to heal the blind, to make the lame walk. It's not to, um, to do any of those miraculous healings that we might look for or think about. Because how much healing can happen? How many lame can walk if that power is still coming from places that are not of God. The first thing we can do before we can be healed is to identify those parts of our lives that need to be lessened and go away. And then we can embrace God's full presence around us and the healing that comes from it. So it makes sense that Jesus, in his earthly ministry, is going to bring about the kingdom of God by getting rid of power that isn't of God. And then move forward into what comes next. So since we are on this same journey as our disciple friends, that is our invitation to, to identify, again, those parts of our lives, those powers working around us, in us, that should be exercised. And to not place an expectation that it's going to be as instant as it was in this story, that it takes time, that those powers might come back again and again and again. But that's why we go through these gospel readings again and again and again. Because we constantly need to be reinvited into what this kingdom can look like. What God's kingdom, come to earth, can be. So, this morning, that's what you get to do. As we move through our service, as you move through your days, think about the forces that are leading and guiding you. The powers that you have yourself that you exert. The powers that are exerted upon you. And which ones are holy and sacred and of God? Work on separating those out and diminishing the ones that are not. And good luck. <laughs> Amen. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in words of the Nicene Creed on page 
in the prayer book. Lord, bless your church in all corners of the earth and in all its wonderful expressions. Inspire people of our time to serve you and become your disciples. May we turn our hearts to you and be transformed by the light of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray this morning for our country, for the health of our democracy, for wisdom and good leadership in our government, for equality, and for charity amongst our people. Help us make wise decisions for the good of all and elect leaders who will use their authority to further justice and peace in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we long for peace and justice on behalf of those whose lives have been torn apart by violence, corruption, and abuse. This morning, we pray for all of Abraham's children and ask that you help each to be a contributor to peace in our world. Teach us to live peaceably with all nations and even those who seek to do us harm. Bring light into the dark corners of the world and give courage to organizations that seek to overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord our God, you give light to those who sit in darkness. We lift up those in our community who suffer without food and medical care, who live without homes or transportation, and those without jobs. We pray for the sick and suffering among us, especially those on our parish prayer list. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those whose spirits are subdued, who suffer under a cloud of darkness and can't see your light in their lives, and those who can't sing, rejoice, or laugh. Open their hearts to you, lift up their spirits, and let your light shine in them. Lord, in your mercy. And we remember those who are struggling and fighting for their lives in hospitals, in recovery programs, in mental institution, and refugees searching for safety. We remember those whose lives have ended, especially Kent Glover. Bless all those who have died and those who are left behind to miss them. May we all come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people. Strengthen us to do your will. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 60. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
quick announcements. Um, so Lisa and Bob Vickers are doing one of their multi-estate estate sales and, um, and they use our space and contribute to, uh, to our outreach ministry by doing so. So I invite you all to stop by Pinder Hall and uh, do some shopping at the estate sales. Uh, apparently it did, they did very well yesterday, but still have plenty of things for you to peruse. So you can head on over after, um, after coffee hour, after, after you spend some time with each other here this morning. Next Sunday, February 4th, is our ministry fair. So after each of our services, we will have all sorts of tables set up and things happening in, uh, in veins and around. And so please be sure to put that on your calendars and come uh, next Sunday to, uh, to engage in the various ministries of our parish. Uh, there is a youth group event today roller skating at Skate House, Lynn Haven. Uh, if you have not yet told Ryan that you are coming, because I know that all of my teens in the parish want to go roller skating, uh, let him know so he can know, uh, give you details and know to expect you. Um, also, our Monday night services that have been going on uh, for some time now have been taken over by uh, the Reverend um, Jean McGraw, who began those, well, she, she was doing those services when she first came here a few years ago, had to step back, and now is resuming them. So there will be healing, prayer, and Eucharist every Monday evening at 6 p.m. Uh, would invite you all to, uh, to come and participate as you wish. Finally, you heard in our prayers this morning uh, that Kent Glover died. That was very early this morning and was very quick. So we are, um, his, uh, his daughter is very thankful for how quickly this progressed, uh, that he was not in, in pain for a very long time. So while it is, it is sudden, it's also a, um, a bit of a blessing too. Please keep the Glovers in your prayers. And as I know more about what plans are, I will share them with you. Okay, walk in love. As Christ loves us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Holy Eucharist, Prayer A, continues on page 361 in your red prayer books. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
continuing on page 365 with a post-communion prayer. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, fill your hearts and minds with the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. We'll now uh, sing our recessional hymn number 535. and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs> 